Hey y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail community news and through hiker update. Well, hiker season's still wide open out there. Of course, it never ends, but the through hiker season is still going on hot and heavy. Still got Nobo folks that are working their way to Katahdin because it has not closed yet. And uh, we still got, of course, subos and flip floppers out there. So let's go ahead and find out what the class of 2021 is doing. By the way, the class of 2022 is right behind you folks, and we'll this week we're going to be talking about them in earnest. Let's go ahead and see what's going on with the 2021 hikers. So Yak, he is back on the trail after a few days at home. He is now southbound for Delville, Virginia. Going to be kind of starting around the Triple Crown area and heading on down to uh, Springer, and he says he can already feel and hear the sounds and signs of the south in contrast to being in Maine, and he's still loving this trail. So not exactly sure what the different sounds are. To me, water sounds like water wherever you are. Now, he could be talking about shuttle drivers and that thick southern accent uh, that some of us have that to live in this area down here. So in any case, uh, I'm sure that is music to his ears. Uh, Huck, he sends word that he is in the 100-mile wilderness doesn't really have great signals, so he couldn't send us his usual involved uh, update there, but he is super excited and just ready to uh, be going through the 100-mile wilderness. He's looking forward to that, and also, of course, he's looking forward to getting on uh, Big Mama K and finishing up his hike there. He said that he would catch up to us on the other side. I want to bring up Farrell. So Farrell is somebody who we had been updating a few months ago, and he was using the AT kind of as a just a uh, exercise to get used to being on the trail, get his trail legs to him. So he has hiked the AT uh, through in its entirety before, and he was just using it just to get in, in shape to go out and hit the CDT. So he's already done the AT and the PCT. He was going for his triple crown and he finished his triple crown, finished the CDT. And so now he is a triple crowner. So congratulations to you, Farrell. And uh, he says he's probably not coming back to finishing up another hike on the AT because he's already done it. So that's awesome. Congratulations to him. Redbeard is a flip flopper from 2020. He is back on the AT and finishing up the Sobo portion of his flip-flop from Damascus down to Springer. Horsepower, now he started on the AT, and then he flipped on over to the PCT and the CDT. He is done with those now, and he is heading back to the AT, and he'll be starting Sobo from Katahdin. I think he started actually yesterday, and he is, of course, all those trails, he is doing the calendar year Triple Crown, so uh, that'll be awesome whenever he finishes. Luscious Nate and Tupac, they are in Bartlett. They're doing a zero or two. They want to wait till you got good weather conditions, good site visibility on Mount Washington before they do that. Of course, Mount Washington has already gotten snow. Here's a cam shot from the snow that was up there. So it's already uh, Mount Washington, Katahdin, both have already gotten snow. So it's already getting cold weather up there. And of course, a lot of times with that snow comes poor visibility just from clouds and stuff. But Hopefully they'll be the weather will break for them and they will be able to get up and over Mount Washington and then they're probably going to have to be flipping up somewhere in the next couple of days uh, to make sure that they get uh, Katahdin done and can get access to it before uh, Baxter State Park closes it uh, for a uh, trail and in, in which they do and and it's liable to happen anytime it just depends on the conditions whether or not the park decides to close it typically uh it is somewhere around the 15th and my understanding is they still allow access up there they just close the campgrounds down before it so you, you kind of have to hike you know it makes a longer hike to hike from outside the park in and go up and do katahdin and back uh, but they will close all the trails up there depending on the weather you know, because they, it is a alpine environment, and so there are some species up there that they get concerned about uh, damaging, and they're not going to allow them to be damaged. So uh, anyway, folks, are, they're going to be trying to make that and get, uh, get back on a Sobo flip-flop before it closes. Luscious also indicated that he has been on the AT diet, and he has lost 52 pounds and has broke the 200 mark. He's down to 198 on the AT diet plan. So congratulations to you, Luscious. Gazelle, Speedstick, and Bugs, they have crossed over into Georgia on their Sobo hike, 
and they should be finishing in the next couple of days. And then viewer Darlene Sullivan, she's a family member for Hickory and Happy Meal, and they are they are up in Maine. They've got a slew of hikers that are around them, and they're somewhere around the Stratton area, and they're hoping to get and finish up a true Nobo all the way up to Katahdin before it gets closed. So a couple of folks out there that we've been tracking that have finished or summited, and that's Skidmark and AARP. They summited on, on September 27th, so congratulations to them. Sidewinder and Strider, they are a father-son team, and Sidewinder, he is 68, and Strider's 36, and they summoned a Katahdin on 9-23. So uh, congratulations, that father-son team. I am sure they've just got some stories that will live with them for a lifetime about things that went on the trail. I think that is awesome. And uh, in, in that age, at 68, I'm hoping to retire in about five years, which I'll put me around somewhere around 62 and then do my through hike. So that certainly uh, gives me the impetus I need that, hey, 62 uh, shouldn't be any problem for me. Maui, he summoned a Katahdin on September 8th. Papa Groot, he has finished his flip-flop and he finished at Pine Grove Furnace. So his route was Amicola Falls, Georgia to Pine Grove Furnace State Park. Then he flipped up to Katahdin and then a Sobo back down to Pine Grove Furnace State Park in Pennsylvania. So says he's happy to be finally done and he has been coping with a hernia since Vermont. So that is a long time to be coping with a hernia. I can't possibly imagine that, especially going through so much of Roxylvania there uh, to finish his hike. Reroute has finished her hike, and she finished at Springer. Congratulations to her. Mad Rat, he has summited, and he'll be returning to Shaw's Hostel to kind of help out and cheer on the other Nobos. Uh, that are coming through that area and do what he can, a little bit of trail angel work there. And he summoned it along with his buddies that he had been hiking with. He actually waited in Baxter State Park till they caught up to him in a few days, and that was Mohawk and Caveman. So I'm assuming that they also finished with him. And Two Knees and Kilt, they summited on September 27th at 11.20 a.m., and they were hiker numbers, uh, Nobo Summit numbers 1,043, and 1044 so congrats to them and then dark web he started on march 10th and he finished this past week and he was number 1156 so we are approaching 1200 nobos so far so that's awesome dark web congratulations to you hydro he summited and nat geo summited nat geo started on march 24th and ended on september 26th 27th so congratulations to all those folks that have finished it or summited their hike. If you are either out there on trail and want to be included in the updates, or if you have summited and finished and want recognition here, we want to recognize you. I want to honor you by including you in this. Is you know that's the best honor that I can do. But I include you in your picture. So send me both of those. Uh, if you finished at Katahdin, then you'll have a Nobo Summit number and send me that information as well, that number, so we can just uh, kind of keep up with uh, a little bit of data that we can include for folks next year. So those that's what's going on with the class of 2021. What about the class of 2022? Well, they haven't necessarily started hiking yet, but they have started signing up yet, not only for my hiker support list, but for the ATC's registration. So my sign-up list is for the 2022 hiker support list. That link is below. So if you are through hiking then and in 2022, you want to be a part of that where people can go and find your social media and just give you that attaboy or atta girl or atta they, whatever it is, uh, that they need to call you, then you can uh, go and sign up for that. Include the hyperlink to your social media. Go ahead and sign up if you haven't got your social media running yet, and you can come back and add that later. Uh, that's not a problem. But right now, we've got over just south of 50 hikers that have signed up for that. So that's awesome. So the hiker community, you can. there's also a link below where you can go and find that list and then you can already go and start subscribing to these Through Hikers channels and go ahead and start supporting them. Not only is do we have YouTube there, but of course we got Instagram, Facebook, and trail journals. And there's even a blank there that if you've got something other than those that you can let us know what that is and include your hiker hyperlink there. And we've got even some of those 2022 folks, they've already stopped, uh, started dropping videos. 
So that is pretty awesome to start already seeing them getting ramped up and we need to do our part as a hiker community to keep them and get them all pumped up. I know they're excited all on their own, but but let's keep them excited all the way to Katahdin or Springer or whatever direction they're going. Don't forget about the 2021 folks that are still out there as well. Just from my hiker list so far, the folks that have signed up, we've got about 83% are, are Nobo, uh, 5% are Subo, and 12% are Flip Floppers. And then most folks, of course, are starting at Springer, a little over two-thirds, about 67%. And we've got about 12% are going to be doing the approach trail. And then we got about 7% doing Harper's Ferry and 2.3 are Katahdin. So that would be Sobos and most Sobos right now are not signing up anywhere. But we are looking not only for Sobos for 2021. So if you know one, send them my way and in and, and 2022. Uh, AT, ATC registrations, they've of course already started. And they, mostly we have the Nobos that have started to register. Um, it's a little early for flip floppers and Sobos, but right now we've got 1,120 Nobos registered, 23 flip floppers, and two Sobos. So that's a total of 1,145 folks that are registered so far. And give you kind of comparison, the class of 2021, the registrations were somewhere around 3,300, maybe a little north of there, but that was kind of the range of where we were in 2021. And there's several days on the registration, the ATC registration for 2022, where we're getting close to maxing out the 50 hiker carrying capacity that the AT sets for the trail. Uh, so it's already started to get pretty pretty crowded on the registration boards out there. So some trail news going on out there. Uh, Brian Laundrie, who is a person of interest in the murder of Gabby Petito, he's not been charged with it, just a person of interest, wink, wink, nod, nod. Uh, he has been charged with uh, using her ATM card and her PIN code after her death. Um, so... You be the judge, put two and two together there. But in any case, uh, he has been reported that he has been on the AT or around the AT. Uh, the Boone police reported to the Charlotte news station, that's Boone, North Carolina, uh, reported to Charlotte, North Carolina news station that they had received several reports of people had citing him there. None of those have been backed up with any concrete evidence. Uh, the Avery County and Watauga County uh Law enforcement agencies there have indicated the same as well, but nothing concrete has panned out. As early as this past weekend, the New York Times ran an article where there was a hiker from Florida, and he claimed he actually ran into him on the trail. That this particular hiker was up here moving cars around for a section hike that he was going to be doing, and he just happened to, uh, he was kind of lost, he got turned around, and there was a truck behind him. The truck, uh, when he got turned around, the trucks they stopped each other, and the guy waved him down and told him that he was lost and that he had been in a fight with his girlfriend and he needed to get to California. Now, if you now where this happened was at the Waterville Road there, which is right there where the AT crosses over or uh, 40. So the Waterville Road is uh, there's Davenport. Uh, shelter, uh, Davenport Gap, right when you come out of the Smokies, and then there you cross over Waterville Road, then you cross over the bridge, and you cross under 40. So right in that area, of course, uh, he, he told him that he was lost and he needed to get to California, that he'd been in a fight with his girl. And so the hiker indicated uh, that there's 40, get on 40, that'll take you to California. And this hiker indicated that or this person in the car wasn't a hiker, he was driving a truck, rather, and he indicated that uh, he wanted to take the back roads and he felt like that road right there would just take him to California. So uh, the, the, the hiker that reported this indicated that he was very uh, confused and disorientated and uh, just all out of sorts. And so, um, you know, don't know the validity of it. This hiker said he contacted the FBI he had not received a phone call back from the FBI. He had contacted 911, and he indicated that he had not received a call back from 911 too. I don't don't know about the call back from 911. I have uh, I have a 
numerous 911 projects that I am a, a part of in building. And these, there's always uh, somebody at that facility. You're not going to get a, a recording or anything like that. Very, very, very rarely, if any, there's always a supervisor and and at least one, if not numerous folks that are there taking calls. So the I didn't get a call back from 911. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But in any case, um, that is what's been reported out there about his whereabouts, if he is somewhere on the AT. Of course, we know that uh, if you know, all the reports have indicated that he has spent time, that he lived on the AT or hiked the AT for three months, if you listen to the news reports, they act like that's a big deal. And of course, the through hike is a big deal, but thousands of people do that every single year, live for months and months and months on the AT. So that's certainly not out of the realm of stuff that could be done. Here's a couple uh, pictures of him. Uh, if you are out there hiking, that would uh, be a good idea to screenshot this. So he's got some identifying marks on him. He's got a scar on his temple. He's got a particular... Uh, tattoo, leaf tattoo on his finger. He's got these uh, little skin tags that are on his earlobes. Uh, he's also uh, got a scar that goes through his left eyebrow. So he's got a lot of recognizable marks out there. And then also there, here is a, a couple pictures of when they were on the Appalachian Trail or there they took pictures and posted them to Instagram and Instagram noted through the GPS that they were on the Appalachian Trail. So these are just waterfalls. They're very small waterfalls. They're not waterfalls that probably would appear on a map or anywhere like that. I've looked through gut hooks and I've looked in the general vicinity of like uh, where you cross over into Georgia uh, and, um, and these waterfalls were not recognizable, but you may recognize them as hikers out there on the trail. So take a look at these waterfalls. If you recognize your waterfalls are like snowflakes, they're all different, but you may recognize these waterfalls. So, uh, and then also this is an unusual shaped tree. It, it may be dead uh, or maybe gone by now, falling down. But if you recognize this tree, it's near this waterfall that Gabby's standing next to. Uh, and you know where that's at on the trail or any of these waterfalls, uh, please get back to me. I'll make sure that gets the appropriate authorities. You know, Hopefully this channel can do its part to find this guy and bring him to justice. And just remember these screenshots right now, the reward is $200,000 for him. So uh, it may be worth $200,000 for you to take this screen screenshot. Then the Kennebec River Ferry is now closed. It closed the last day of September. Uh, it's still available, but you will have to pay for it. During hiker season, it is paid for by ALDA, the Appalachian Long Distance Hikers Association. Uh, and then the main ATC pays for it. The main ATC, which is the, the club up there, the maintenance club, trail maintenance club uh, does it. And I, I think the ATC itself maybe gives a small part to it as well to keep that uh, free for the hikers. But now you'll have to pay for it. The only alternative is to ford it, and I would not recommend that to you. There, there has been a drowning back in the 80s there, and that is a dam-controlled river, so the water can rise without warning whenever they start turning on the uh, letting water through the sluices for the uh, dam to start generating power. So it will come up very quickly before you can get across, and it's very dangerous. The only folks that, uh, that I've heard of fording in, I'm sure there are lots of folks, but... Typically, Warren Doyle, who, if you know anything about the AT, you know that name, Warren Doyle, and he's actually a, a subscriber or a viewer here. So, hey, Warren, hope you're doing well. Uh, Warren does expeditions. He has hiked more the Appala more miles on the Appalachian Trail than any any anybody else in the world, and he does a lot of expeditions, taking people up there on through hikes and leading them through that, and his... Uh, website says that no one in the expedition will consciously take another route and I think he's referring to the AT there but he says the only exception to this expectation is the fording of the Kennebec River in Maine which may be done by canoe for those individuals who have an unreasonable fear of fording it by foot so not sure what the litmus test is for unreasonable uh, I'm sure if you were just terrified, Warren would let you take the canoe. But uh, in any case, it is not a river to be uh, to go by yourself, fording it, and um, and so I would recommend that you don't do that. That you call the canoe. 
Uh, Kim Shuttles in Bethel, Maine is closed uh, for in permanent due to the death of the owner. So we are, our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to the family of Kim there who for uh, numerous years was a shuttle driver up there and helped hikers in Bethel, Maine. Uh, Katahdin has gotten snow. We already indicated that in Mount Washington. So just keep that in mind as you're heading that way that uh, you might want to get there sooner rather than later or might want to consider flipping uh, at some point in time. You know, Katahdin typically... Uh, they close the campground somewhere around the 15th, uh, and at that point in time, you'll have to hike from outside the park uh, all the way into Katahdin, so that's a whole lot longer hike, but they have closed it before the 15th, just depending on the weather. They have a, a alpine environment there that they don't want damage done to the plants and things up there, and so if conditions are right, then they will close the trails up to Katahdin, and you will not be able to do that, and they will not open them back up until next year. So keep that in mind as you are heading north. And then our northern correspondent, Whispers, he indicated again at Mount Washington and Katahdin is, uh, had snow and also ice. He says that's right on schedule. This is typically when they have that each year. And he said that uh, many campsite and shelter caretakers in the New England states have already left their sites for the winter. And that he saw over a dozen Sobo flip-floppers in the Mahusiks earlier in the week and they are definitely still out there in force so if you're a sobo flip-flopper you better get on the move because it's going to start getting cold as these leaves drop down so just a little bit of channel news about me is that i will be at the gathering for alda the appalachian long distance hikers association in abington this coming weekend i'm looking forward to that that is another great time for the hiker community to come together uh, a lot like trail days, maybe not quite as big, but it's still pretty neat. Uh, you'll see there'll be a lot of classes that you can go to. There'll be vendors there as well. And the main thing that will be there will be the hiker community. So I'm looking forward to fellowship and talking to everybody and seeing people. So if you see me there uh, and you recognize me, then please come up and uh, chat with me and, and we'll, uh, we'll get together and just have a good time up there. I am really looking forward to that. And uh, hopefully... Uh, the weather will cooperate, and we'll be good to go. Folks, that's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out there.